Okay, so we are here for the third and final installment of 2022, the year in review. Sorry, it's a little late. I'm still <clears throat> a little sick, but it's okay. We'll get through this. I'm going to just blast through it because I don't know how long my voice will last. Okay. Wish I had an editor for this stuff, but the only editor I know who's good enough is me, and I don't have time. So we'll do this the way we have been so far. Sorry, in the future, I hope to have a bit more of a visual aid, but for now, at least you can just listen to this without having to watch too hard. So put it on in the car or something. Okay, part three then. We managed to get to the point where the Rings of Power finally came out, as did She-Hulk. And both were roundly rejected by fans, as no one was surprised by. Because, of course, both were absolutely terrible. It was around about this time that the uh, Little Mermaid got race-swapped, memed, and ratioed into oblivion, thereby giving Disney another excuse to call everybody a racist, even though the last time they did that, it cost them money. They still refused to learn anything at all, <laughs> to their detriment. But hey, whatever. Screw the rat. I don't care. Keep losing money, Disney. Amazon desperately tried to cover up the backlash to the Rings of Power, which was colossal. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a backlash this big. Even the, even the Last Jedi pales in comparison to the backlash to the Rings of Power. You really, really, really pissed off the wrong fan base here. <clears throat> they deleted reviews, though, to try and shut people up. And they took away the ability to review the show on their own platform, supposedly for something like three days, but it ended up being over a week. And they also took out loads of reviews on IMDb because they own it. For once, Rotten Tomatoes actually ended up being the one with the most honest score. Well, apart from Metacritic, of course, but, um, well... Rotten Tomatoes has somehow more prestige, so that's the one everyone looked at. Brie Larson popped up back in the news for the first time in quite a long time, getting interviewed and displayed full crazy. Seriously, check out my video on this. It's hilarious, as she accidentally revealed her rampant unpopularity. Somebody literally asked her when she'd be playing Captain Marvel again, I think, or something along those lines. And she went from perfectly nice, blinked, and went, I don't know. Does anybody even want me to? And then looked at the guy like with the murderous stare of a serial killer and then blinked again and went back to normal. Honestly, it was like changing from first to seventh gear and then back down to first. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> anyway, maybe she had a balloon of something up her butt that suddenly exploded and then wore off in 10 seconds. I don't know. Anyway, G4 made the news one more time. Well, no, several more times, but this time it was because they had been forced to have massive layoffs thanks to the decline of the brand. Basically, uh, what Frost had said had taken its toll way beyond what anybody expected. Nobody was watching, nobody was subscribing, nobody was in the streams, nobody was chatting, nobody cared anymore. And of course, in the wake of the massive layoffs, you would think somebody like Frost in someone's in the position of Frosk, I mean, would say, I'm so sorry, I wish I could have done something to stop this. I've learned my lesson. Wish you all well. No, she tweeted, I survived. I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, if at this point, if somebody handed you a weapon, Frosk, would you just drive it through yourself? Just, just to prove how tough you are or something? I have no idea. Literally everyone hated her after that. Even her own people on her side hated her after that. Of course, she and Adam Sessler continued to melt down over everything. Um, it was about this time that the Emmys came along again and got a record low for viewership, so bye-bye to them. And a movie called The Woman King came out and uh, tried to make the story of a tribe of African black people who were in fact slavers into a tale of them rebelling against colonizers. Fake history to go with fake news then, basically. Of course, uh, every single episode of She-Hulk and Rings of Power are still coming out every week, getting worse and worse and worse. She-Hulk is twerking with some trampy musician called Megan Thee Stallion, who I have no idea who she is, but okay. Jamila Jamil, who plays um, Titania? Yeah. I think it was supposed to be Titania anyway. It doesn't look like her, apart from the boobs. Attacked the fans and got owned by everybody she tried to respond to. It looked ridiculous, totally stupid. She made herself out to be something she's not, and that is intelligent. Meanwhile, Rings of Power gets more and more ridiculous, eventually resulting in Guy Ladriel, the warrior princess or whatever, 
tanking pyroclastic flow from from Mount Doom as it erupts for the first time about a thousand years too late, right in the face. Just shuts her eyes and takes a wall of molten ash and escapes unscathed. She just looks a bit like a Cheeto. I mean, are you kidding now? Come on. Are we supposed to believe that elves can tank volcanoes? This is insanity. No one could do that. Elrond couldn't do that. Sauron couldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, I'd be very surprised if many of the Valar could do that. <laughs> anyway, suddenly uh, another distraction from She-Hulk and the rings, the rings, the rings of power was a movie came out that was called Bros. You may remember it, but only because you saw it on channels like mine. A movie uh, that was touted as a gay rom-com but was really more of an anti-straight rom-com. And rom-com is not a very accurate description either because the rom part was more of a series of orgies than rom, and the comedy was more a series of catty remarks about straight people than comedy. So, gay rom-com, anti-straight propaganda. <laughs> it died a death instantly and got one of the worst boxes of the entire year, but not the worst, but one of the worst. Meanwhile, two different Scooby-Doo spin-offs emerged at the same time. You, can you write this stuff? Both of them focused on Velma, of course, because Velma is geek fodder, but neither of them actually being Velma, because one of them turned her gay, and the other one made her a fan-hating racist with dark skin. I mean, honestly, I can't wait to see what happens with that. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to covering that when it comes out. I'm, I'm really... I think I'm going to have some fun with that one. Anyway... The finale of She-Hulk gets leaked um, and reveals that the plot will involve Jennifer Walters finally suffering for her crimes and selfishness, only for her to break the fourth wall, escape the entire show, talk to the writers, talk to Kevin, and rewrite the ending so that she wins and gets to keep Daredevil as her toy. Uh, all of this turns out to be true when the episode comes out, cementing the legacy of the show as one of the worst things ever made, ever, 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 ever fight me over it. Rings of Power ends too, proving that the fans were right. Hullbrand was, of course, Sauron, as we all knew, because, of course, we all heard it from other channels like Nerdrotic and people like that. But, you know, it was pretty damn obvious as well, because he's the most unassuming character, but also with this darkness. He, he's a straight murderer, you know. He beats up a bunch of people in alleyways. I mean, his signs are there. It's, it's not... You don't have to be even, like, teenage intelligence to be able to work this out. Hardly anyone any ca even cared anymore by that point anyway, because the show was absolutely so bad. It's just basically a meme with how offensive it was to Tolkien. But Amazon's very, 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 very aware of it. Uh, Robbie Coltrane, the actor who played several roles, Valentin Zukovsky in the Bond movies, Cracker in Cracker, I think, and, of course, uh, Rubius Hagrid in the Harry Potter series dies, and the left dance on his proverbial grave because they are disgusting people with absolutely no moral compass and because he had some respect for J.K. Rowling, who they hate still because she's a feminist, but not a modern feminist, a trad feminist who actually wants women to do better in life and can't believe they ended up on the same side as us this year, but they did because the other side is just arguing that men and women are not real and they can become each other's gender and... Well, is it any wonder you pissed off the feminists, you freaks? Anyway, none of this mattered very soon because one of the biggest stories of the year that didn't involve a TV show came out suddenly from nowhere. And that was the fact that G4 TV, just, what, eight months? Nine months since it... No, almost a year since it started, but only about eight months after Frost's ramp, rant, or nine months, died. Totally dead shut down completely, less than a year since it began, and everybody knew it was because of Frosk and Adam Sessler. Don't forget his part, too. Speaking of Adam Sessler, he then went apeshit on Twitter and started calling fans out for physical fights. As I said then, I'll say it again. If you want to fight Adam, we're all here for you, but you better be ready because there's going to be about 10,000 of us. Okay. Um, the most uncelebrated and yet apparently good show in the world this year came out in Star Wars Andor, a spin-off of a spin-off featuring a character that we already knew died, one that I very much predicted no one would care about and was correct. 
what I didn't account for is what many people, like Film Rebel, told me. It's really apparently quite good. I haven't watched it. Don't know. Don't care. Blackpilled on Star Wars now. 90% of fans don't care anymore either. So that's why no one cared. Um, if a tree falls in the woods, etc., etc. One day maybe I will watch it, but it ain't today. Black Adam came out. That was the one that The Rock had been touting all year long, going on like it's going to be the second coming of the DCEU. More like a last hurrah, if you like. I actually didn't mind the movie at all. I thought it was perfectly fine. Um, I, I mean, there's a lot of plot contrivances in it, but it's not slamming us with woke crap, you know, so that's nice. Wasn't too bad. And of course, after years and years and years of confusion and no one having a clue what the hell's going on, The Rock was able to get Henry Cavill to appear as Superman in the movie for about 15 seconds after the credits. Womp womp. Fans rejoiced, of course, as Henry Cavill came back. And then, just a couple of days later, he announced what everybody had been waiting for, with or without Snyder, with or without Affleck and Gadot or any of them, he announced that he, at least, would be back to play Superman. And everybody went nuts because everybody knows Henry Cavill is not only a true nerd, a stalwart gentleman, a very talented actor, and a caring human being who really takes his role seriously. And also, if you built an actor to look like Superman, it would look like Henry Cavill. If an AI created Superman as a realistic human being, it would be, it would be Henry Cavill. So that was good news. Let's see if it lasts. Meghan Markle, the uh, spoiled little rich bitch who was born hot, became a C-tier celebrity, married and corrupted Prince Harry and split him away from his soon-to-be-dead grandmother, Her Majesty the Queen, suddenly uh, began promoting a docu-series on Netflix about the couple by acting as though her life had been terrible and that she'd been oppressed and it was something to do with race because she's got, what, like olive-coloured skin? <laughs> I mean, this is a lie. This is an outright lie. I just did a video on it. You'll see. This is one of the reasons why Netflix is hemorrhaging money as we enter 2023. So anyway, Black Adam, like I said, it wasn't a bad movie. It had some good stuff in it, but it couldn't possibly make enough money for its insanely over-budget production. Of course, a lot of that was to do with COVID and blah, 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 and then getting Henry Cavill. So the budget ended up really, 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 really high. In like the over 200 million mark, never was going to make that much money back. It didn't have what Iron Man had. And in, a, in a, a world where there are already a sea of more popular superheroes, one about a nondescript character on a universe that no one has any faith in anymore, it was never really going to work with or without The Rock, no matter what The Rock says. Pardon the pun. But She-Hulk and the Rings of Power disappeared from their platform's top 10 ratings about a week or two after they finished. This is not good, especially for Amazon, who touted many times how great the show was going to be and how they needed it to justify its budget by being an, a world-shattering, life-changing media phenomenon. Yeah, it didn't do that. No one cared a couple of weeks later. No one's watching it now. The show came and went, embarrassed itself, stumbled over the finish line, fell flat on its face, pushed its tooth into its own nose, and almost died. Of course, they then announced that they would be doubling down on all the wokeness by firing all the men, but that would come a bit later. Frosk, without G4 anymore, tries to remain relevant by uh, attacking Henry Cavill over the fact that he once dated Gina Carano, but the reality is Gina Carano is the darling of the internet. Henry Cavill is the male version of her, basically. There's, it's like Keanu Reeves or someone like that. These, you can't attack these people. No one will believe you. We just have a good reading on these people. They don't do what these people like Frost do when they come out me, 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 all the time. No, you don't get it from Henry Cavill. You don't get it from Gina Carano. You don't get it from Keanu. There are just people out there who keep their damn mouths shut and let their work speak for itself. Anyway, 
None of this would matter very soon because we got to the point where the reckoning finally happened. The biggest news of the year, absolutely the biggest story of the year, in a year that had a lot of big stories. No, the biggest one after months of waiting, backpedaling, lawsuits and drama, Elon Musk walked into the Twitter office with a sink after tweeting, I'm now the boss of Twitter, let that sink in. I don't even mind the dad joke, it's funny to me. He is the owner and the CEO of the company. Celebrities everywhere decide to leave Twitter and then realize that without Twitter, they have absolutely no power and influence, and so they come back, bitching the whole way as the platform finally turns into the kind of place where you can actually get a, a blue check mark for a few dollars in order to verify your identity rather than having to suckle on the leftist teat and get accurate information and hear the opinions of others. You can now do both those things and also say virtually anything you want. That was pretty good. In fact, Twitter has become 10,000 times better than it used to be. You can say almost anything on there now, as long as you don't like call for violence. And I mean, really, not like what they say Trump did. Anyway, Henry Cavill finally announced, after a lot of people conjecturing about this, that he would leave the Witcher series because they don't honor the law. <laughs> no shit. No one gave a damn about the Witcher series anymore because they don't honor the law. Everyone knows this. Oh, and Wakanda Forever came out after saying that only black people should be allowed to go see it. <laughs> and that white people should hand over their tickets to black people and then stand and guard the doors. I'm oh, sorry, but this sounds like a, a 180 flip of that bad taste joke from South Park, the movie. You know the one. I'm not going to make it. I've seen what happened to other YouTubers when they did. Anyway... It performed even worse than Thor Love and Thunder at the beginning, but it did pick up after a while. None of this, of course, stopped perennial sellout shill Kevin Smith from crying about the movie. Anyway, another movie got a trailer that we've been waiting for for a little while, and that was the Super Mario Brothers movie. Not the one from 1993, of course, but the actual full CG Nintendo-backed one that was pretty good. We had a teaser of it. Most people were a bit annoyed about Chris Pratt's voice performance sounding just like Chris Pratt, not Mario in any way, shape or form. And there's a scene with Peach holding some kind of halberd and it looks like it could be a woke moment. But thanks to the full trailer, a lot of our faith was restored. It looks pretty great. The soundtrack sounds cool. There do seem to be Easter eggs by the billions in there. I'll give it a go. Um, we got round to mid-November and uh, just one time, like last time I'm going to mention this, unfortunately my mother passed away following a lot of complications stemming from old habits that got worse due to the two years of lockdowns that were only supposed to be two weeks of lockdowns. Depression is not funny and neither is oppression. But hey, it was all for a good cause, right? Certainly none of the people whose lives the lockdowns indirectly destroyed suffered over a pack of BS, right? Right? Anyway. Disney released its second main brand movie of the year, Strange World, and no one cared. All went to see it. Wakanda Forever lost 79% in its first box office drop because nobody cared or wanted to watch this drivel. Uh, having lost audiences in its movies and shows all year across Star Wars, Marvel, and Disney branded properties, as well as losing its self-governance status in Florida, thanks to Ron DeSantis, its stock price crashing, losing over a billion dollars and having to do mass layoffs. Wow, what a sentence. Disney backtracks on the new third year contract extension of Bob Chapek and fires him on a Sunday night, really quietly, replacing him with his predecessor, Bob Iger. Bunch of people think this is actually gonna be a turnaround for Disney until you remember for five seconds that while Bob Iger was CEO, that's when all this woke trash started. So, I'll reserve my optimism for something worthy, thanks. Quentin Tarantino joins the list of Hollywood royalty who talk trash about the mass-produced homogenized sludge that has become the MCU. Simu Liu, the no one to no one, from Shang-Chi accepts um, the responsibility to clap back at Quentin Tarantino, but looks like a chihuahua snapping at the heels of a chimera and soon shuts up again. Uh, Elon Musk, through various independent and centrist journalists, ex-leftist journalists too, begins dumping something called the Twitter files. Hundreds and hundreds of pages of internal communications that prove every single thing that we've suspected for the last two or three years about the company to be 100% true. 
Twitter did collude with government agencies to shrink the reach of conservatives. They did suppress that computer story. They absolutely buried doctors who went against the COOF narrative and more and more and more. It is really time for all these people to get what's coming to them and either end up behind bars or under them. You know what I'm talking about. James Cameron finally released Avatar 2, The Way of Water, after 13 years, and it absolutely smashed everything. It did better than Top Gun Maverick. It's already doing better than Top Gun Maverick by trajectory. I guarantee, after a couple of days of the time of recording, that movie will have overtaken Top Gun Maverick. And we're almost at the wrap-up, so stay with me to the end. Strange World has the worst audience score of any Disney movie ever and has to be removed from cinemas less than a month after it went in because no one cared. More and more celebrities came out against Hollywood and cancel culture, including Ice, uh, Ice Cube, I can't say it's true, Helena Bonham Carter and Kate Blanchett. Very good. More and more people are coming out against this rubbish. And it's about time they did because it is rubbish. Of course, that didn't stop some of them from continuing to double down as they always do. Like Alyssa Milano, who made herself out to be an absolute idiot for the millionth time with her anti-Elon crap. As was Mark Ruffalo, who joined the fight against free speech. And Meghan Markle continuing to lie about being a victim while no one is watching her show. But no one made a bigger ass of themselves this year than Jennifer Lawrence, the voice of the one true God, who finally revealed what we all knew about her in the first place, that she was, in fact, the first first ever female to be cast as a lead in an action movie and I'd just like to thank her so much one more time for building the time machine to use her influence so that people like Sigourney Weaver, Linda Hamilton, Demi Moore, Carrie Fisher, Uma Thurman etc etc and multiple Bond girls could all do it chronologically first. Wait a minute. Okay, whatever. David Zaslav, the new head, of course, of Warner Discovery, suddenly appointed James Gunn and Peter Safran as the heads of DC and everybody was pretty happy until they fired Henry Cavill as Superman, a month after telling him to announce it. And the fans are split, and I mean split. Personally, I would love to see a Henry Cavill Superman movie, but I also understand very much that if you want to make a new universe and distance yourself from the higgledy-piggledy mess that the DCEU has been for the last 10 years, you need a clean sweep and a new cast. You just do. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. That's my take. Hate me if you want. I still think I'm right. James Cameron prepared uh, Avatar 2, by virtue signaling. Now the movie was already out, but he continued to virtue signal first before the movie came out about toxic masculinity or testosterone or something. And then after the movie came out, something about guns, even though he's got more guns in his movie than almost anybody, except maybe Quentin Tarantino. No, probably more actually than Quentin Tarantino because his are mostly dialogue based. Anyway, it's an interesting marketing strategy there, mate. I hope it works. And uh, Will Smith was totally ignored at the Oscars, despite appearing in a movie about slavery. Wow, Hollywood really loves their slavery movies, so I guess he's just never going to live down that slap like Jennifer Lawrence will never be taken seriously in an action role again. Avatar 2 hit $1.2 billion in two weeks and now is currently almost at $1.5, like I said, and Tom Cruise breaks the internet by jumping out of a plane and during the middle of this shoot for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, in midair, records a thank you greeting for people for supporting Top Gun Maverick. What a class act. I mean, that's ridiculous. That is so cool. He says thank you for letting him entertain you and secures that people will turn out for Top Gun uh, any future Top Gun movie, as well as probably anything else that he makes at this point. He's done the Sonic strategy, and it worked for them. It will only work more for Tom Cruise. The last few releases of the year, The Witcher Blood, Origin, and Margot Robbie's Babylon, and come out and get completely destroyed. The terrible ratings and low audience scores, Blood Origin even unites the fans and critics against it. It has become painfully clear at this point that the total interest in Hollywood, combining the box office and the streaming numbers, has dropped significantly. 2022 was the year that the woke, deviant, radical left decided to show their hand. They dropped the facade and went directly after your kids. Backed by Hollywood and their products. Disney wants your kids to be brainwashed into being gay. And big tech is colluding with the powers that be. Twitter was manipulating public opinion and possibly even big political decisions to support this radical trash. And the celebrities on social media by and large have less sway than they have ever had before. Fans make the decisions about what succeeds. If you take away anything about this year, it is that. We decide where the money is spent. We have had the, enough of being lied to, manipulated, 
insulted, smeared and given so few options for quality entertainment that we've walked away from everything and have come to YouTube or started making comic book companies. At least right now, some truthful opinion can still be expressed on YouTube. Although you have to dance around a few things. You should support small and large creators on YouTube and any other platforms you like too. Show that companies like Ripperverse can replace the stagnant comics industry and the organizations like G4TV who want to insult you for being curious about their product die in the dirt like the dogs that they are. As we now begin to turn the tide back to a world where, I hope, one day we can walk and talk freely again with no stupid masks on and no one censoring our opinions. That's what I'd like for this year. What would you like for the year? Let me know in the comment section down below, as well as your thoughts on a lot of the things I talked about in these three videos. Thanks for sticking around. I know that combined these are over an hour now, more like an hour and a quarter or something like that. So thanks for sticking out. I hope you've enjoyed them. A little walk down memory lane of just how ridiculous this year was. I will be back with another more regular video for you very, very soon. But until then, see you next time.